Today we're going to take a look at the ESP32C3 Mini and the LD240 and make a presence sensor for Home Assistant. Why? Well, every good maker should answer that by this. Why not? Or because we can. But I digress. You see, in the old days, we were using a lot of these. This is a PIR sensor. A lot of you have probably seen these. It relies on infrared light to sense movement, but that's all it does. Whereas the LD240 is a more modern approach because it uses MM wave and it senses presence moving or not. So why is that a big deal? Well, if you're like me and you're turning your lights on and off based on motion, well, there are odd times where you may just be sitting still, maybe watching a movie, and this PIR sensor will report back to Home Assistant that there is no movement, so it needs to shut off the lights. But you're still in the room, you're just being still. So that's not ideal. So by replacing PIR sensors with an MM wave system, it will allow me to more accurately tell if someone is in the room, whether they're moving or not. Now there are a whole bunch of other features that the LD2410 offers and its abilities and even things you can do with it. But today we're gonna build a better way to manage lights turning on and off in Home Assistant and for my home automation. All right, the first thing we wanna do is take a look at the pinouts for each one of these boards. On the left, we have the ESP32C3. If you're not using this board, the one I have linked down below, just make sure you're pulling the correct pinout for your board. This is super important so you don't have any damage, as well as looking at the code, which we're gonna do here in a minute. This will give us an idea where we're supposed to hook up our GPIO pins. But for instance, with the ESP32C3, you'll notice that they are labeled RX and TX. Now these might be in a different spot on a different board. So you will wanna adjust your code. But in this tutorial, we're just gonna assume that you're using this device that I have linked down below. On the right hand side, you can see that we have our M wave sensor. Same deal there. It's just really good practice to pull the pin out and verify that the pins are where they are supposed to be. The next thing we want to do is take a look at the code. This is going to give us a good idea of where we need to start hooking up our pins. And we aren't going to look at the whole code set just yet. We'll look at that a bit more when we're inside of Home Assistant. But you can see here the code on the left. We are looking for GPIO 21. That's going to be our TX and GPIO 20. That's going to be our RX. Now also remember when we take the TX from our M wave sensor, this is actually going to route to the rx of, of the super mini and that's just the way it works tx will go to rx and then rx over to tx but we need to take a look at the code and here we can see what that looks like now it's really hard to show you because these are very small devices but my intention is to hook this up on a breadboard first hook it up to home assistant then i'm going to solder it up print a 3d case and we'll be done with it but it all starts on the breadboard and if you are new to this game don't solder first. It's the same kind of deal in woodworking. Measure twice, cut once. Well, this is just that type of precaution. Wire it up on a breadboard with jumper cables, and then this way you can verify it works before you move on to the rest of this project if you intend to do what I'm doing, which is make it really tidy and in a sweet little case. So these are the two devices, and this will show you. I have a red jumper cable going from five volts on the ESP over to the VCC on the LD24 zero the m way mm wave sensor then i have my ground wire going over to ground rx as i mentioned is going to go to gpio pin 21 which is the tx on this particular board and then tx is going to go over here to the rx now hopefully that makes sense to you in this diagram but now that we have it connected the next step is to move it into home assistant and start hooking it up through esp home builder okay now that we have it all wired up we're going to make some assumptions first that you have home assistant installed somewhere mine happens to be installed on a raspberry pi 5 and second that you have esp home builder add-on installed within home assistant if you need any help with that there'll be links down below super easy to do but check out the links before you move forward with the rest of this tutorial now it's time to log in to your instance of home assistance and what i suggest is you physically plug in your esp32 device directly in via the usb port on the device that's running your home assistant 
There are other ways to do this, but I've found this to be the best way to avoid errors, especially if you're trying to integrate it with Home Assistant. As I mentioned, you're gonna need to install ESP Home Builder, information down below, but that's our next step once we log in and we have everything hooked up physically to the host machine that's running Home Assistant. Now we just need to head over to ESP Home Builder. This is where we're actually going to deploy the ESP and also put our custom code on it to make it work with our sensor. So the first part of this is just setting up, for lack of a better term, the project. So we're gonna add a new device by hitting that big green button. We're gonna hit continue. From here, we're gonna name the device. So I'm gonna name this Lab Radar. You can name it whatever you want. Hit next. It's gonna ask us to select which device we're using. And in this case, we're using the ESP32C3. All right, once it done, does that, instead of installing it right now to the device, we're going to go ahead and skip that because we're gonna add some custom code. If we go into the project that we just set up, you can see here, it's getting it all provisioned. It's giving it its own API, also an OTI password that's unique to it. Now down below here is actually where we're going to paste in the code I have linked in the description. Now, one of the things to note about the code is this is from someone else, it's open source, but I had to alter it. So there is a little piece of code above there that has to do with the Wi-Fi gain, and I'll show you that in a minute. Just make sure you're aware of that. Cut and paste this, but also add in this other one, especially if you're using uh, uh, the same hardware that I'm using. So now that I pasted in that code, again, link in the description, you can see here uh, we are captive portal and everything down. And you'll notice this is actually where we grab those GPIO pins, the GPIO for the text and the RX is right here. And this code is just going to provision the LD2410 and set up some rules and some code to make it all work how we want. You don't need to alter anything right here. The only thing that you do need to alter is the Wi-Fi gain. If we go up here, underneath Wi-Fi, hit enter. We need to paste in, and let me control V this, output power 8.5 dB. Now, this seems like other people didn't have this problem. I did, but I increased the output power and it worked. So from here, all we need to do is we can save it if we want, or we can install it to the device. So if we hit install, it's gonna give us a couple different options. In this case, as I mentioned, we have it plugged directly in to the host machine. So we're gonna select that option. Then it's gonna say, what port do you want? We want this one. So now what it's going to do, it's going to walk through, provision this ESP, and then place the code on it that we want. So we'll let this run and I'll be back once it's finished. All right, the code has finished. You can see here, it's connected to my Wi-Fi. It's got good strength. Looks like everything is normal. So the next thing we need to do, we can go ahead and go to settings, go to our devices, and we'll notice that if you did this right, we'll see a lab radar beacon has been discovered under ESP Home. So we'll go ahead and hit add to that. Do you wish to add this? Yes, I do. All right, so what's the encryption key? Let's go back here and I need to get that. So let's cancel this really quickly. Can I even cancel it? Oh, I'm on the wrong screen. Let's cancel this really quickly. Go back to our ESP home builder. Let's go to our lab radar. It says it's online. That's good. And let's get the encryption key. So let's grab this encryption key here. Right click copy and go back into our notifications even. You can check out the newly discovered device, add it. It's gonna add for the encryption key. Now we'll hit submit and hopefully it finishes and it's going to ask us what area this is in. Now for me, this is in my lab, so I'll select that. It's going to, yep, it looks like it's got the right thing. We'll hit finish. So these are all my ESP devices. It takes you right into that. Let's take a look at the device itself. Now, this is something that I've noticed that can be quite common. You can see here that we're not seeing anything yet for the device in terms of any of the sensor data. So what I need to do is reboot the system. Once I reboot the system, I'll be back and we should see these values start populating. Now that I have physically rebooted it, I've also found 
that you don't want to just refresh the YAML code or you don't want to just soft reset it. You actually want to physically reboot the host machine. And once you do that, we can come into here. We can go to our settings and devices. This will be listed under ESP Home. We see here Lab Radar. And now we're actually starting to get some sensor data. If I move closer to it, you'll see there it's sensing the distance or move energy. And it's also doing presence and also still target detected. So that's pretty cool. Now it's all set up. It's using that millimeter wave radar to sense presence inside of my lab, exactly what I wanted to do. But now we're gonna do a couple things to actually extend the ability of this based off some of the sensor data that we're getting. So on the left-hand side, if you wanna set up some automations, I'm gonna show you what I'm doing in my lab in terms of managing my lights with the sensor data. So the first thing I'm gonna do is hit that automation button, then go to use device as trigger. Now I want to say, okay, lab radar presence become occupied. That, that sounds great. Now let's go back and give it a couple different things to do. I'm gonna scroll down here. I'm gonna look at some of my lighting and I want it to turn on once the presence becomes occupied. Once I hit that, I need to select my devices. I will do the two lights that I have here in the lab. There we go. And actually let's do, let's do this other light I have as well. And uh, everything looks good there. These are different things that you could do. Set the brightness. I'm going to leave it at default and I'm going to hit save. Now we're going to name this and I'm going to name this lab uh, presence. I can't spell, so bear with me. Uh, lights on. We're going to give it a area of the lab and then we're going to give it a category. The category I will give it will be, let's see, let's do this as lights and then we'll give it a label as controls. And this is just something that I've come up with. You can actually name them whatever you want there and you don't even have to do this, but let's hit save. All right, now we have this. This is lab presence lights on. Now let's go ahead and do one for off use device as trigger we will do not occupied and then we will come down here and do the same thing we'll just add in our lights and we want them to turn off choose the devices that we want we want this one and we want two more boom and let's see boom so now that we have them both in our light category under controls so presence lights on i think my lights are off right now so we'll run this one so let's go here and run actions and i don't know if you saw if that made it brighter and then we'll run this action and let's do that run this action and it turned the lights down so we made an automation based off that sensor data but let's go ahead and test it just in case uh you don't trust me now that the lights are on quite bright in here what I'm going to do is walk out and they should shut off. I left up the sensor detail page. We are basing it all off of this right here. So you should see this change. It won't say detected. The light should dim. Then when I walk back in, the light should come on. That's in a perfect world. So fingers crossed. I'll be right back. Okay, there we are. And hopefully you just saw those lights come on as well. So it does work. The next steps that we're gonna do, you can stop here. You can leave it wired up to a breadboard, whatever you wanna do, but I'm actually going to solder it up. Before that, I wanna walk you through just a 3D model that I set up that I'm gonna use uh, on my 3D printer, print out a case for this thing just so it's nice and tidy. I went ahead and I found this model. I happen to have a Bamboo A1 Mini that I recently just got just for this type of thing because I do do a lot of embedded electronics. It's been a whole lot of fun. I'm gonna do a video on it at some point, but I have been on a 3D printing tear and I ended up finding a model right on the maker site of Bamboo. Now this model was okay, but unfortunately it was slightly small for my setup. So I just went ahead and extended it a little bit and now let's send it over to the 3D printer. That way we'll have the case ready for when we solder. Now that the 3D printer did its job, 
we are moving on to the soldering portion. I'm just gonna do a quick montage on this, but I did want to give you a word of caution, especially if you're underage. Two things, one, the soldering iron is not to be messed with. It can get really hot and it can really hurt you and scold you really badly. So if you're underage, just make sure you have adult supervision. The same thing goes with all this electronic stuff and electricity, even though it's low voltage, it can still be very dangerous. So please make sure you have adult supervision for the, all of this project. And if you are a, an adult or a supposed adult like this guy, well, I'm doing this all on my own accord and you should be doing this all on your own accord cord at your own risk. I recommend having someone certified. No, I'm not going that far with the lawyer speak, but just know, I think it's really important that especially if you're underage, just grab your mom or your dad or, you know, your supervisor, I guess, and, uh, you know, get busy and have some fun. Just be careful because especially with the soldering iron, this is a very dangerous uh, machine that you're going to be working. So with that, let's roll up our sleeves and start getting z -z 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 melting some solder boys. Well, I, I think this came out looking pretty dang good. All that's left is to plug it in and put it to use. I am so grateful that the ESP Home and Home Assistant teams got together to make all this possible. I now have ESPs running everything from Bluetooth gateways, temp and humidity sensors, and now presence sensors. Making these little gadgets are no doubt fun, but they're also so incredibly useful. And of course, building anything yourself, man, it just feels so good. Well, as always, happy making. And as a wise man once said, hack till it hurts. I'm Hill Phantom, and I'll see you next time.